Okay, so for the next part, we have, um, we've done number one. We've completed our graph. We have a double line graph. My red line represents P waves. My um, yellow line represents my S waves traveling through the interior of the earth. And so for step two, we have to determine the depth range for each layer of the earth. Now recall, one of the things that we've learned is that when seismic waves hit a layer made out of a different material, they change their speed or paths. And we're really looking at speed here. And I wanna help you do this part. So we're gonna study our graphs for just a minute and see how like we start on the surface of the earth. Okay, at zero kilometers. And the seismic wave starts traveling through the earth and see how from here to here, right there, that little section, when we get to about here, see how it kind of changes what it does a little bit? Actually, maybe even see how it really changes right about there. It goes up and then all of a sudden it's like it slows down. And look, our P wave does the same thing. It's traveling de um, deeper into the earth and it's speeding up. But when it hits about right here, the speed slows down. So we know we've hit a different layer right at about there. All right. And then I notice from here to here, it seems like, you know, our seismic wave as it gets deeper in the earth is steadily speeding up. See how the speed is increasing as you go up. So as I get deeper, see how this is speeding up. See how my P wave is speeding up. As it gets deeper in the earth, it's speeding up pretty steadily. Probably the, you know, the layers of the, the material in the earth is getting denser and denser. And it's probably just able to travel through it faster. And see how that seems to happen from there. But look right here. Something happens when we get to about this depth. It's not a very straight line, is it? All right, so from here to here, it pretty much steadily does the same thing. It steadily increases in speed. But right here, all of a sudden, look, our S wave totally stops. It goes all the way down to zero speed. But look at my P wave. It does the same thing. Once it hits this exact same spot, look at how its speed changes dramatically. It goes from like 14 kilometers per second down to about eight kilometers per second. It's like, it, it, that means it hits something new. It's speed dramatically changed. All right, so then I notice that this completely stops. Now we're in this new layer and look, my seismic wave is traveling steadily faster, steadily faster, but see how the speed kind of dramatically changes right here? Then I know right about here, I've probably hit a layer made out of something different. So see how at the parts where the seismic wave does something dramatically different, like right at about here, all of a sudden it abruptly slows down. Then it's steady, 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 abruptly slows down, new layer. Steady, 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 steady. Ooh, abruptly gets faster. Steady, steady, steady. Okay, so now the question is, what are these layers? So right here, this small little section, gosh, it's even hard to write this in there, is the crust right? The crust is not very thick, as you can tell. Compared to the rest of the earth, right, as we go deeper, 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 you can see this crust is just a teeny tiny portion. So what's underneath the crust? Underneath here, we have, this is seismic waves traveling through the mantle. Well, what's under the mantle? From here to here is the outer core. Notice Size, the secondary waves don't even travel through the outer core. They stop. And if we think about why, think about what the outer core is made of. The outer core is made of liquid. S waves can't travel through liquids. That's why our S waves abruptly stop and go down to zero when they hit the liquid outer core. And then from here to here represents the inner core. And so you need to take a moment and just on your graph, divide up these layers. When you see your seismic waves changing their speed dramatically, like going, oh, abruptly changed. So we must be going from the crust to the mantle. Steady, 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 abruptly changed. 
we go into a different layer, specifically in this case, the outer core. Steady, 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 abruptly change. We must have hit a new layer. And of course, now we're in the inner core. And this is how geologists have kind of figured out that the interior of the earth is made up of different layers and made predictions about the state of matter. Like that, for instance, the outer core is liquid because they know secondary waves can't travel through liquids. So they uh, are making a wise prediction that that layer is probably made out of liquid. So now you're going to use this information to continue through the rest of your packet. Um, you can see we've done number two. You'll put some information on the other side of this page regarding that. You'll analyze data and provide evidence that supports the claims of the seismologists. So now you're going to use this graph to make estimations of how deep the crust is, the mantle, the outer core, the inner core. Of course, make sure you read these directions here first. Um, We've, we've done number one together, just FYI. So for when you read that, you'll know that we've done number one. Um, actually, I'll just go ahead and read it. It says, we know that seismic waves move at various speeds depending on the material through which the wave is traveling. Therefore, we can determine where there may be a change in material or a new layer based on the data and your graph. Develop a way to label your graph to show the depth boundaries of each of the earth layers. All right, so we did that here. We used our graph and when we noticed a dramatic change in speed, we knew we were hitting a different layer. So we've done number one together. Now you can use that graph to answer number two, three, and four. And then we're going to also, on the very back, the following claims have been made by seismologists. In your assigned group, cite evidence from your graph that supports each claim. We will end up presenting our evidence to the class to explain how the evidence supports the claim. You'll be assigned one of those to present. So, But you'll go ahead and um, try to validate those claims using evidence to all of those, and then you will be assigned one to discuss with the class.